Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler. I want to take a little time and go through some information with respect to heavy metal testing. There's a lot of confusion within the medical community, whether that's the traditional medical community or the biomedical community that's dealing primarily with autism, about what some of these different types of tests mean uh, and which tests you should do first, which tests you should do second, and really how to integrate all that information. So this video is actually going to be broken up probably into two, maybe even three videos, because uh, I don't want to make them too long. So let's, let's lay things out, if we can. There are many different types of tests. We know that many kids on the autism spectrum have heavy metal exposure. That's not unique, because people in our general population, um, you and me, have been exposed to heavy metals as well. What makes kids on the spectrum unique is that many of them have weaknesses in their ability to detoxify these heavy metals um, so they become more susceptible to the adverse problems that heavy metals bring. Mercury, for example, likes to go to the brain and nervous tissue and so we know it can disrupt um, nerve function, brain function, etc. But other heavy metals can disrupt body chemistry as well. We know there's problems with lead, we know there's problems with aluminum and arsenic, so it's not just mercury, it can be a culmination of different heavy metal exposures. One of the first things I do in my practice when I'm doing a general screen for heavy metals is I'll run a hair analysis. Now I primarily will use two different labs or the hair analysis from two labs, um, one being Great Plains or doctor's data. Essentially they're the same test. So I'm not ordering both tests from both labs. I'm ordering it either from doctor's data or Great Plains. And the reason I like their test is there's a lot of data behind it um, with respect to clinical significance as well as interpretive knowledge about how to implement the what the different markers mean with respect to the clinical presentation of that particular patient or that child. Okay, so again, Great Plains has a hair analysis, Doctors Data has a hair analysis, um, and they're essentially they're the same test, so either one is fine. If you have insurance, then Great Plains can be a great place to go. Um, some of the other labs don't necessarily accept insurance. So what is a hair analysis? A hair analysis is a screening assessment for heavy metal exposure. It generally gives an idea about what metals have been exposed to in the past and really what is in circulation in body tissues, let's say minimally over the past 10 to 12 weeks, although the exposure certainly could have been done uh, come about some time ago. So when you see something being excreted in the hair, it's an indication that that metal was at some point in time at a high level and the body is making an attempt to get rid of it. Okay, so it's a test of exposure. It doesn't tell you specifically where the heavy metal is or how much is really in the body. Now, there has been talk about hair analysis with respect to mercury, that if you're not seeing mercury show up in hair analysis, that that could mean that that child is retaining that mercury and therefore not releasing it. And that certainly can be true. Um, the other possibility is, is that nothing is showing up in the hair test because there really hasn't been significant exposure. Um, so you kind of have to think about these things and that not automatically think that just because a metal is low in the hair um, automatically means that their body is not getting rid of it because there could be a situation where they just didn't have significant exposure. The area on the hair analysis called the essential minerals um, does show some patterns that can be indicative of mineral transport problems um, that are correlated to heavy metal toxicity. And I actually have a section on my website, the membership site at autismactionplan.com that specifically goes through how to analyze a hair analysis with respect to the essential mineral section to determine is there a high probability of heavy metal um, toxicity and mineral transport problems because it's, it's an in-depth process to do that. So again, real quickly, a hair analysis is a good screening tool to get an idea of the potential for heavy metal exposure and the potential for heavy metal toxicity. On an initial workup, I will generally do the hair analysis along with what's called a porphyrin analysis um, to really help bring together that full picture if we're really dealing with a significant problem from heavy metals. And I'm going to talk about porphyrin analysis in the next video.